Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. Let's get started on a soul journal. Get some pencil crayons out. We've got a blank page here. It's inexpensive paper, so don't be afraid. It's just paper. Tape the edges of the coil if you don't want to get mucky paint all over it. Trust me, I've been there. It's not fun. I'm putting a piece of um, plastic sheet behind it to protect that paper. It's not watercolor paper, so it is vulnerable. I'm holding the pencil crayon at the end of it so that I cannot forcibly control what I'm drawing. This is twofold. One, to just make marks on the paper and put something down as a first layer. And number two, it's just to get me into my mojo and into the zone. This is just the way of starting to play and get your mind into the moment. And it's working. At this point, I'm already in that zone and I'm not thinking about anything that's happened during the day. I am in my happy place. I'm going to use a fine tipped uh, container with my black high flow acrylic paint and I'm making some squiggle lines here. Again, this is just to start playing. I'm not really thinking of too much as far as structure. I'm just putting some layers of things down. What I like to do while the paint is still wet is activate it with some water. So I've got water in a spray bottle. Spray that on and you can see already it's making some interesting feathering technique on the paper. If this was watercolor paper, it would even do slightly different feathering. Because it's quite wet, I'm dabbing off any of the excess water so it's easier to dry between layers. The blow dryer is going to be your best friend during this process, so have it handy. Uh, as you can see, when I'm blow drying, it's forcing some of that wet paint to go off and branch in different directions. This is something I absolutely adore in my process. It's something you couldn't plan. I couldn't even think of drawing those, uh, painting those shapes, but there they are. And I'll work with them, or I might cover them up, but these are happy things that happen, and I love it. Definitely part of my process every single time I do an abstract. So I'm making sure it's good and dry. Sometimes it helps to take that plastic out from behind the paper to blow dry it. So I've got some heavier um, acrylic paint, white, and I'm going to do a lot of painting over the surface of this page. I, I am not, even though it looks like I'm painting quite rapidly, I'm pressing quite softly. So I'm feathering the paint over the painting, if you will. It's twofold. One, I want to put a layer of paint over that inexpensive paper so that later on it can accept um, paint and wet substances better without bubbling and, and, and you know, it'll just, it's just a good way of covering the paper. Number two, later on when we add paint to that texture, in the areas where the white paint is, it, it will react differently to where there's original paper showing underneath. So anyway, I don't worry about covering every area of it. And I'm not thinking even about, I'm not even planning at this stage. I'm just starting to cover over some of it, making this an underpainting. I love to put a lot of white at the edges and corners because I like to sort of have uh, my images disappear out towards the corners. So I'm putting a lot more paint there. But I am, as you can see, dabbing quite a bit. It's making... Again, it's putting this black layer into, it's pushing it into the background, making it more ghost-like and subtle. While it's wet, I'm scraping with a toothpick, toothpick into that paint. And um, you'll see why I do that later. It's, it's all to provide um, interest later on when I add paint. You'll see the surprises that happen because of it. So I'm continuing around the page, making sure I put a light layer of paint I'm changing the direction of the brush strokes so that I don't have any real um, brush strokes showing up later. Again, this this I, I'm lost in the zone at this point. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just I'm just playing, I'm having fun, I'm not thinking. I'm really, really into my zone. This is such meditative, good therapy for the soul. Sometimes I like to highlight if I find, I love looking for ovals and circles. So if I find those, I put a little extra white paint there because I want to highlight that that's a shape that I like. It may or may not stay through the painting, but it's a start. I'm adding, while, I'm, while it's still wet, I'm putting more um, 
um, engraving with a toothpick. I'm smudging that a little bit to get rid of some of the sharp edges that the, it happened when I put the toothpick there. That's a bit smudgy there, so I'll fix that later. Again, I'm just highlighting more of the shapes. I love making circles. I'm using a paint spreader, but you could easily use an old credit card or an old you know, business card or something from your wallet, anything to scrape. Uh, so I've put some extra white over there because I didn't like that black smudging. And because of that, um, I'm re reinforcing the scrapes that I did with the toothpick. Again, I want to blow dry this so that this first layer is good and dry. As I'm drying it, I'm taking a look and analyzing. I'm not analyzing too critically, but I'm looking at the, the shapes that are already happening on the page and thinking about it. Later on, I'll think more about balance, but right now I'm just still just putting an undercoat. Uh, I wanted a little more white there, so I just add a little bit more before I finish blow drying. I'm speeding up the blow drying so that I don't bore you with how long this video actually ran. So I'm saving you the agony of that. Uh, I'm using my first favorite color. Love this color. These, these few colors that I put down, other than the white, they're very high flow acrylics. So they're very fluid. Uh, they're not very dense. If you don't have those, by, any, by all means, use any paint that you've got. I'm just showing you what to do with the paint. I'm not telling you what you have to use. Uh, because it, and these high flow acrylics are quite transparent. Again, you can buy and use whatever you've got. You'll see already, I hope you can see, that as I'm applying that high flow acrylic, all those places where I scraped with the toothpick uh, are picking up that paint and it's, and it's causing the paint to sit in those grooves that I made. And uh, it becomes shapes and um, character to the page that I wouldn't have thought of painting. It's just there. These are, again, what I call happy accidents. I'm going to give it a good blow dry before I add the blue. If you were to trust me by experience, I can tell you that if I add that blue and have it touch the orange, especially if the orange is wet, it's going to get muddy. It's going to turn green. So I want to keep, keep these layers good and dry in between. I decided I want a little bit more. See how runny and transparent that is. You see how, because I've added more, I wanted a little bit more depth of color in the middle of the page. And I wanted to bring some of that orange down into the bottom. I'm thinking already of balance, but I'm not overthinking it. But now you can see that that big patch of orange, it spreads into three areas of the page. My second favorite color is this fluorescent blue. Just love it. Again, it's quite transparent as well. Look at how that's already going into the grooves from the toothpick. Love it. That looks more interesting to me than if I was to paint those blue uh, dash lines. I just find it's interesting to see what reveals from layers before. And that's my big secret with my artwork. I'm balancing by putting blue in the back in, in, in as many areas as I can. Later on, I'll add some in the top right area just to balance it. But right now, this is a good start. A little bit of that black is showing through and that adds a little bit of interest as well. Again, if I was to not have done that before and add some black now, it would be very dramatic. And I like the subtlety of revealing these layers. Let's put that uh, uh, plastic sheet back because we're going to do some more work and it protects the pages underneath. My accent color is this green. And rather than put that on directly, I've previously added it with white paint 
so that um, it's a little bit less of a dark green, it's a little brighter. I like to put my accent color in three different areas. I call these three areas even though I've dabbed them in a quite a few places. One, two, and three. And I am very mindful that I don't want all three areas to look the same. So at the top there, I'm smudging it. I'm just dabbing it in the other areas. That's way too heavy of an application for my likes. So what I'm going to do is dab that with some tissue paper to get rid of some of it. And again, I don't really love this effect, but I'm not worried about it because I know what that it can change later on. If you really didn't like at that point what you did, because I dried the orange beforehand, you could actually take a wet wipe and wipe all of that off and reapply if you didn't like it. But again, I'm all, all into playing with just going organically here and going by instinct. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just kind of putting things down. If you don't like things later, you can paint over it. I'm adding a little more in the bottom there because you see how the green goes up the top of the page and runs off. I decided to have it run off the bottom of the page as well. Now in doing that I've made it way too uniform as far as a border all around that orange and it's not going to stay like that. I don't like that. Even dabbing it off with tissue didn't, didn't help but that's okay. No worries. It's paint. We can go over it. I'm giving an extra good dry because of that uh, green paint being a little thicker. Don't fall in love with this. This is what I call the mid-painting. Um, it's, it's only one of the many, many steps. I'm looking for my box of tissue papers. And there they are. And this is where the magic begins, people. This is where it becomes so fun and playful. I pre-printed these tissue papers with this stencil. And I will show you in another. There's a complimentary miniature stencil. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that in another video because it would be too long to do that in one video. Just trust me, we'll get there. Right now, I just want to get you excited to show you what you can do with printing tissues. Look at what happens here. Look at that magic. Look how I transform that medium, medium uh, painting into this fun. I couldn't even think to create those shapes right now if I wouldn't have used the pre-printed stencils. So I've got two versions when I do the jelly printing with that one stencil. You either have on the left the positive area being all white and the squiggles being transparent or in that case the squiggle lines are white. And I was just trying to decide which I like better. And if you were to look and say, hey, I'm going to use the stencil and do black, that would look nice as well. But this is a soul journal and I want things to be more gentle. So I'm using the white. And I'm using the first sheet because it's got a lot of white areas and I love how the squiggle lines will be the transparent lines. So they will, with great fun, pick up all the different colors as it works around the painting. This is just, I just love this. This is, this is just playing for my soul and it's just, at this point, I'm already really, really happy and in the zone. I'm going to take away some of that where the blue is. I don't want that pattern as a uniform pattern all over the page. I like mixing things up and, and, and changing things. I like to give the eye a journey on my abstracts. I don't want you to just look and settle in one spot and go, oh, that's what it is. I like the eye to travel around the page. I like the eye to take a little journey and, and use your imagination as you're doing so. So I quite like how that is. I'm setting it aside. Now I'm going to bring out my matte medium. This we use as a glue. It's, it's great, it's transparent. You can paint that on, use it as a glue, and it will dry clear. What also happens magically is that tissue paper is very frail. So when we place that down and paint on the matte medium over top, it's gluing it down, but it's also wetting that tissue paper and allowing it to become very, very transparent. The tissue paper eventually will just look like it's disappeared and it will look like you painted that white over the page and yet magically it was the tissue paper that did it. So I'm being very liberal with this. The more matte medium you use here, the more it interacts with the tissue and breaks down that tissue and makes it disappear. Boy, I love playing with this. It's, it, it's just so much fun. 
I hope you're liking it so far. So I'm going to place the tissue in the location I want and I'm going to gently pat it down with my hands to keep it in place. And then I'm going to start painting on the matte medium over top. Always work in an outward direction. Start from the middle and work outward. If you don't, you'll end up shifting and pushing that tissue and it'll come, become folded and wrinkled. It looks like I'm pressing very hard, but I'm not. I'm actually, until I know that it's down, I'm, I'm not pressing overly hard because again, it becomes very wet and, and it starts to break down and you can end up pushing that tissue. Look at the fun, look what that's just, it's just transformed that medium painting into, into magic. Look at it. Just love the lines and the pattern. And again, use whatever stencil you have. If you like flowers and things, use flowers. Here's a complimentary stencil. Unfortunately, I did not, on the previous project, I used most of that paper up. So I only have this one piece and it's quite dense with white paint. I'm not loving it too much, but I, I'm going to change that later. So what I want to do is use this complimentary mini script stencil paper in the blue areas as a, a complement to the bigger squiggles, but being different as well. I hope you subscribe. That helps let me know that I'm on the right track and that you're enjoying this and I can show you more. I do this anyway, but I am really happy to share with you the secrets of what I do to make my soul sing. I'm not trying to teach you to be an artist. I'm trying to teach you to do something for your soul and have fun and play. I believe in playing every day. So I'm going to paste that down. It adds a lot more white. Again, if you add a lot of the matte medium, and in this case at the edge, because there's so much white paint on the edge of that tissue, I'm not loving that white line. I will get rid of that later on with paint. In this case now, I'm actually pressing harder. And look what happened. It actually broke away. That's what I'm telling you. It breaks away if you press too hard. But in this case, it's a happy mistake because it's giving me an idea. I'm going to put more in the bottom to balance out. I'm trying to add a lot more white into the painting. See how it goes from white to more color as you, as you activate that tissue paper. I love the balance of more white in this painting now. So because I loved how the tissue paper broke away from those orange squiggy lines. I'm forcing it away so that I can expose more of those squiggle lines. I'm trying to do so at the top edge too, but it didn't want to come away as easily because there was quite a bit of paint there. That's okay, we'll take care of that. So I found another area where I want to show more of the orange squiggle. So while it's still wet, I can scrape away the tissue paper. See how it gets shifted if you press too much. Anyway, I'm really liking what happened there. That mistake ended up being really a, a fabulous, happy accident. I'm going to give it a good blow dry because I've added so much matte medium here. The page is very wet with it especially where I just added those last two bits. Always have the patience to either blow dry it or walk away and, and come back at it an hour later, but make sure every layer is dry. I found the complement. So you know how I had two printed tissues, one with the reverse of the other. So the first I put down was transparent squiggles with white positive. Now I'm doing transparent positive areas with white squiggles. So it's from the same stencil. You know it's going to work on the page, but it's a complementary opposite. And it brings focus up to the top left corner there, and yet it blends 
completely with the whole effect. I just love this. Look at how fun that is. So it draws the eye up there and it's, it, it's nothing jarring. It's still, it, it, it's complementary to the rest of the, the stencil. Love, love, love that. When I teach you to print stencils, uh, I'll teach you how to do some by, by just painting on the stencil as well. I didn't like all that solid green up there, so what I'm doing is the squiggle line that I saw there, I'm enhancing it and bringing it out towards the edge of the page so it draws the eye up to the edge like the other areas do. And I'm just adding a little extra white paint where it's needed. And I'm smudging it and fanning that out because I love how ghost-like and smudgy that white area is. So this whole piece is a, co a, a complement of opposites. It's smudgy and soft and faded and ghost-like and strong, stark lines as well. And I think it's a lot of fun. I'm always analyzing the page as I dry as well. Uh, while that wet paint was still wet, I'm taking that toothpick and doing my magic again. I wanted to draw the eye over to the left and in adding that extra white over top, I was able to scrape and reveal more of that strong orange underneath. So I've continued the line of squiggles over to the left, but it, it's, it's a finer, stronger um, squiggle line. So it's it's working to make the, the page flow. Now I'm going to use the blue. I'm going to add a little blue in that top right because I, I want to move the eye up there because there is no blue up there and I just want a little hint of it. I don't want it to be all four corners being blue. That's not how I work. I like things to be different everywhere, but balanced. So by drawing the eye up here, I'm balancing the blue without balancing the images. I like asymmetry. And I'm not thinking too hard about it, I'm just going intuitively. I really want to express to you that the whole idea of this is just play. If it didn't work out and you really hated it, you could wipe that off with a wet white and start again. If you didn't like the whole painting when you were finished, you just take the page out. It's just paper. Don't be hard on yourself. Just play. And sometimes I'll make things and I don't love them a lot at the end. And later on I look and I go, wow, I really like that. So don't be hard on yourself. Just let loose. Like I said, this is a soul journal. This is for your soul to get lost in play. I think it's actually more positive than even journaling because you're you're not putting negative things down. You're just you're you're just making something exciting and colorful that later on you could look at and say, you know what, I had fun doing that. I remember what I was thinking of when I did that. I think it's actually more powerful than writing. So I'm enhancing more of the blue. Notice how the top left has blue with white squiggle, and now on the bottom right, to balance that, I've got white with blue squiggle. I didn't like, as you know, um, that white edge before, so I'm putting some blue there. And then I love to reveal what was there. Like I let the stencil show me what it wants to do. And I used my finger to smudge that a little because I want that smudge to sort of blend into the smudge of the white. So just a little bit more blue touch up there. Isn't that fun, though, what the top left is doing and what the bottom right is doing? Would you really have thought? I wouldn't have thought to paint that. I can't express that enough, how fun these happy reveals are. If you were to take stencils and stencil directly with paint onto your piece, if you didn't like it, you're stuck. But because you did tissues beforehand and lay it over top just to see how it looks, gives you a chance to change your mind. Now I'm going to um, enhance quite a bit of these orange areas. I'm finding this is beautiful, I love it, but it's too flat. And one of the things I like to do with my abstracts is 
provide um, layers of depth. So enhancing uh, the squiggle lines with the red, with the orange, just like I enhanced the blue and the white popped, this is allowing the details to show up and the white to pop. And it's just allowing some colorful layers of depth. I love how you've got some strong, strong areas and then you've got some very faded, soft, chalk-like. It almost looks like chalk where the, the muted areas are. And, and this is, you know, the first favorite thing I love about my, my process is putting the stencils on and seeing what it does. This is my second favorite thing. And this usually I do quite slowly. I've sped this up, but it, I do it quite slowly. And this is the part of the process where my mind really, really gets lost in the moment. This is the magic. Like, I, I'm just intuitively moving along. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm not planning. I'm just almost letting my brush as I work, it kind of knows where I want to go. I've decided I want to make the script flow from top right to the middle to the bottom right. So I'm kind of encouraging um, that script to keep flowing one into the other. It wasn't quite doing that before. It was more broken up. Again, if you don't like this, you get the wet wipe out because you blow dried it beforehand and you just wipe it off and do it again or leave it the way it was. You might like it exactly the way it was, end of story, on to a new one the next day. But I'm just having fun playing, so I'm going further with it. And I like to show you, this is, I'm not trying to make you into an, um, an abstract artist, uh, just having you play in a journal book, but I'm teaching you what I do for my process for canvases when I do abstracts for galleries and shows. I'm, I'm trying to let you know what I do and in my head how I make decisions. You can play around and follow what I do and then you can end up eventually, if you do a lot of this, you'll find your own way of doing things. Again, enhancing things in the bottom left brings the eye down to the left because everywhere else in the painting things are running off the edge of the paper, so I want that to happen here as well. Oh, just love this color. See how that's popping already? It's popping to the foreground. So what I'm doing is continuing that orange from the squiggle lines right up into the solid orange. I'm bringing it all, and I'm revealing little shapes. I love when I find shapes, especially circles and ovals. I like to enhance those and bring them forward. It's like the stencils telling me, hey, don't forget about me. I'm a happy shape. Bring me out. I'm being very careful not to touch that green because if I did, it would turn into a dark green and that would bring a fourth color into this. And I don't like to do that. I like to use, for the most part, three colors. You can use as many colors as you like. I'm not trying to tell you that you've got to do it my way. I'm just sharing with you how I work. There's some pretty good flow happening here, but it needs more. Again, I want uh, almost like a river running through it. I wanted the river to flow from the top right down through the middle to the bottom left. So I'm encouraging, a, a, besides darkening some of the um, um, squiggles, I'm trying to encourage a pattern for your eye to follow.
I think I was having trouble with that jar because it's running low of ink, of paint. So what I'm doing here is a little different, even though there wasn't any smudging there. Again, I like to use the same colors, but break up the pattern. So I'm rubbing it a lot and smudging it. In doing so, you can see how that beautiful dark color gets faded, almost becomes more yellowy. And I wanted that color to go into the white. So I didn't want white shapes everywhere. I wanted to break it up and have some of that become orange. Because I splattered a little blue in the top right there, I decided let's go with that. I didn't want to wipe it off. Let, let's just add some more blue spots. Again, I'm, I'm doing a variety of patterns, but they're all different shapes and sizes. So isn't it amazing? I hope you can see that by doing those strong um, splash marks with the orange over the white area, it draws the eye there. I think if I would have done that in another color, it would have been too busy. So this is a, conti a continuity of colors, but it's breaking up and giving your eye lots of interesting little shapes. And that's how I provide a journey for the viewer to look at this. You could look at all these layers at another day and, and, it, and you can get lost in different trains of thought. But I'm not liking how that bottom left is still a little too faded. There's too much orange in the middle and the top right. So I want to enhance those squiggle lines that I scraped in with the toothpick. I want this area to pop. It'll not only pop on top of the white, but you will see when I'm finished that it is joining with the river of the other script. Remember I said I want it to flow like a river. So eventually what's happening is I'm in, oh, and I'm also a love when I, as I said, I love to find shapes, especially circles. So I'm bringing those forward. You have to be pretty careful at this point. But again, if you make a mistake, wipe it off and do it again. Or perhaps you've got some stenciled tissue that's similar kinds of lines in an orange and you could put that over top instead of painting it on. So now you can see the magic of me tying in my, my toothpick squeakle lines are now joined, officially joined, with the orange of the um, stencil squiggles. Now definitely, most definitely, I can travel all across the page because I've forced it to. More blow drying. I love these quiet moments in between where I can just look and think about how it is. At this point, you know what? I'm quite happy with how it looks to begin with. But um, So what I want to do, because that's quite solid at the bottom, I want, I, I knew when I was looking at the other tissue, I saw this, this tissue here that had the dots and the one at the bottom that's got a very faint pattern with that green, but it's so pale and faded. So I am tying in the white and the green in a pattern without it being a strong green. This is probably one of my favorite parts of the whole painting. Discovering that bit of tissue, look what it's going to do. It's just, I absolutely am crazy in love with that. So because I'm sticking with my color palette, I'm not making this jarring. It's totally um, going with the flow of the rest of the page. So happy I found that piece of tissue. Look at that. Oh, absolutely love it. It's almost like I dusted that section on with a thin layer of chalk. Absolutely love what this is doing. Strong and dark and light and chalky and, oh, love it. I think that's my favorite part. And it ties in with the green in that green smudgy area on the bottom right.
The more you do pages like this, the more you'll realize eventually what works well together and what doesn't. But again, it's just playing. If you don't like something, rip the page out. Nobody says you have to keep it. It's, and, and most people do not see these journal books of mine. They're, they're for me and me alone. So there is no judge. I decided I didn't like so much green over there, so I'm painting over with that heavy white. I'm painting over some of the areas. Um, twofold. I'm adding more white down there because I needed to balance the white down there and I'm removing some of the green I didn't want. Mostly though it's giving a pop of white. Yeah, I wanted the green, like I say, I want the green in three areas but I want it to look different in all three areas. I think this would look boring if you did the same thing bang 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 in three different spots. And there's me bringing out the oval. Love it. I love that top left and bottom right. I think that's amazing. And I'm using my figure to smudge it again, so I've got that chalky, smudgy look. If I was to keep everything strong like the orange squiggle script all over the page, I don't think it would be as interesting. This is not only making the eye flow around the page, um, but it's giving you so many levels. So I think the top right at this point is too dark. I like how uh, everywhere else, as you can see, it's fanning out into being more chalky at the edges. This is just another way that you could add, uh, add layers of white without painting white. So I'm adding dots. Again, dots are my second theme. I've got script and scriggles, and then I've got those dots. Some were accidents and some I splashed. But I'm just adding more dots. And you'll see that um, I want the dots to be subtle in the middle area and then to get denser and denser towards the top right so that it becomes a cloudy white. So let's put this first layer down, patting it first because it's a big piece. And again, fanning it out from the center to the edges. Again, as I'm doing that, that white tissue paper is disappearing and all you're going to see if you zoomed in would be white dots. It's still not white enough at the very top, so I'm going to add more layers. But each time I add more layers, I bring it closer to the corner. It's almost like you were to take a pen and add dots and go thicker and thicker and denser and denser, even more white at the top. I like that better than just getting the white paint and fanning it out like I did before. And I'm trying to show you in this one painting all the different techniques that you could do at some point. Finally, I just wanted that last little bit of white at the very, very top. Again, if you were to zoom in, it would be very dense in white dots. And partly that and partly the layers of the tissue add a little bit of dusting of white as well. I just, I just love this page. It just, to me, it's busy and yet it's calming at the same time. And again, those are my stencils on the left, but you could use anything that you've got. I'm not telling you to go out and buy that stencil, even though it is one of my favorite. Maybe it'll become one of your favorites too. I'll leave it in the notes. What I, I do know what the name of the big stencil is. The smaller one, I wasn't able to find it, the information on it, so I'm sorry I can't share that info with you, but I'll tell you about the bigger one. Now I'm taking the tape off pull it to, away from the painting towards the other side. Otherwise, the paint that's stuck on it will pull into the middle of the painting and ruin it. So always pull away from the painting. And because I've dried this, even though I sped up the video, I'm cutting away now, now that it's dry, I'm cutting away the edge of the paper where the tissue is. And as I said in the caption there, I will follow this up. Probably the next video I will do will be how to do stencil printing onto tissue so that before we do more journal prints, we could, uh, you, you'll have a stash of them yourself. At this point now, the painting is done. If this was a canvas, I'd be rotating it around and around. You can see that it balances no matter what way you orient it. I, I just love the balance of this. It's fun. I'm calling this done. All I have to do is sign it. 
I hope you had fun. That's the one I tried to duplicate. I ruined the video, so I couldn't show you how. So this is journal entry number one. I can't wait to do the next one with you. I love the balance of it. The eye moves around the page. You've got the script happening. You've got a story here. I think it's fun. I really, really hope you get into it. And we'll see you at the next one.